Welcome to another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo, and I'm joined, as always, by Chris, the Technician Aceto. It is January 30th, 2017, and Chris, we are nearing the end of January and about to start February, and I was up in New York this past weekend, and it reminded me very quickly of how cold it is in the Northeast. I think it's 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 mild. It was like 40 today in Maine, and I thought it was like... It's all what you're used to, right? It's bizarre. Guess. It's you know what, Chris. When I walk outside in Florida, and it, and it's been cold here actually since I got back. It was, today was it was a cool day. It was like in the 50s or 60s. But when I got back here and and, and I walk outside, and it, I'm never I never feel that chill to my bone. And in New York, I I would get out of the rental car and I I would be running basically into like any building that I was going to. It was just it was cold. It wasn't the most. It wasn't brutal. I still had shorts on. It didn't stop me from wearing my shorts. Well, the, but, the bizarre part, Dave, is when 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 you were huge, you would wear a tank top and uh, shorts. bicycle shorts in the dead of winter. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I don't even think I would wear a jacket. That's the funny thing. But um, nowadays, I have to keep my upper body warm. I'm not quite as uh, the my, the metabolic furnace is not quite blasting as, as as much as it used to do. So I have to I have to attenuate it a little bit by putting on a on a sweatshirt. But yeah, you know it's. Uh, it, it is what it is. It's winter in the in the northeast, and it's in the southeast. It's not winter, and uh, it's winter, but it's not cold. So, uh, I, I I definitely saw the difference. But you know, it's funny. Um, the only thing I can equate it to, and I, and I don't think anyone else can relate to this, except maybe people who who have gone to jail. Um, when you go to jail and you get out and you come back to just to your environment, it feels weird, and you know you're home, but like. You don't. It doesn't really feel like home yet, and you kind of like feel like you're like an observer from the outside. There, it's, it's a weird feeling for like a week or two. I got that when I came back to from Florida to New York. I hadn't been there in three months, and I was like, "Whoa, I know where I'm going." And it's very, you know, obviously I've lived my whole life here, but it kind of feels a little weird, you know. Uh, I had to get a hotel room for the first time, and I don't know if you saw my video I put up on my. Uh, no, I didn't Facebook. see it. Facebook, I, I, yeah, it was, it was like the, um, uh, the, the mate, the Bates Hotel, basically. It was like, yeah. I, I think you should go back, uh, because that house had so many bodybuilders come and go. The house where you were yeah. living before. I, you know, you I should go see in- the house. That's kind of weird. Well, you should interview. Maybe you should interview for, for live with like the new owners, or get a tour of that house, see what they did to it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to wait through the summer because I bet you probably they haven't done anything to it because usually the winter, no one really starts redoing anything, especially outside the house. But yeah, I, I, I was going to go back and then I'm like, you know what, next time I come, I'll go see the house. But it was uh, it was it was odd, you know. But yeah, I had I, so I said, you know what, I'm going to book a hotel. Now, I always see all these people who like these supplement. I'm not going to mention names, all these supplement company owners who want to show off and say, oh, huh, I'm in the – the most expensive hotel room, you know, overlooking the most expensive, you know, this and the most expensive that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm taking the opposite route. I'm going to take, get the cheapest hotel I could possibly get, save money. And uh, because I, I, it's, it's weird when you live in an area, it's hard to then go in a hotel in the same area. So I, I took, I got this days in that was like 80 bucks a night. Uh, mm-hmm. I got Johnny and I a room there, and when I pulled up, I was like, oh my god, this thing doesn't look too good. But the, it's funny because it, it's like a, like a really crappy looking hotel from the outside but they have this like sushi place like as part connected to it right called blue sushi it's kind of weird it like looks like it's almost like cool all right and then you go into the lobby and you're like well it's kind of like one of these like hotels you see in like one of these you know episodes of one of these series where like you know some down and out guy is staying you know and you gotta you gotta drive up to your room you know and you 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 get out of your car and like there's no like lobby it's just the there it is. Yeah, there's the door. Open, you just yeah. open the door, right? I was on the second floor. Of course, there's no elevator. I had to walk up the steps of my suitcase. And then I walked down the hallway, and there's like it's like kind of like screened in the hallway, but it's not mm-hmm. air conditioned or, or, or heated, so it's freezing. And, you know, see, it's weird. But you know what? The rooms weren't bad, actually. There was microwaves and TVs. And believe it or not, the internet in this hotel, the free internet, was way better than my office and way better than my house. So... Uh, I couldn't really complain. I got more work done there because uh, I was able to answer emails at a, at, a, at a good pace. So yeah, there's no distractions. No, you don't have so, your your son around and yeah. the snakes and your wife. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no the, dig. The, not, the funny thing is, though, you know, it wasn't that bad. So uh, 
you know, everyone was like, what are you staying there for? Oh, stay in the gym. You can sleep on the couch. It's, it's better. I said, nah. I said, it's, it's all right. So I stayed at the Days Inn Hicksville. That was my uh, experience for the weekend. Dougie Wentz, is, isn't that where he's from? No. Hicksville. No. Oh, is that where Amityville Horror is? Amityville Horror is in Amityville. Was, oh, Amityville, yeah. Doug Wentz is from Babylon. 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 So I called it the Bang Hotel. You know, it's like one of those those hotels that people rent by the by the hour. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can go in and, and uh, <laughs> you know, bang it out. Have an affair. Yeah, yeah, have an affair yeah. and. So uh, LaGuardia off. Airport is being is being redone. I don't know if you if you've been there recently, but um, I thought they were just building parking garages. You know, because they built a nice parking garage, and I was like, oh, this is pretty nice. And they redid the whole inside of the terminal. Like over the last year, and it's beautiful inside the terminal now. I mean, it's, I mean, breathtaking. And it used to be right ten four years horrendous. ago. It was insane. Horrendous. Yeah, it was horrendous. So, um, I had to rent a car. Obviously, I don't have a car in New York anymore. So I, I had to get, but there was no, there's no shuttle buses allowed to come to the terminal because of all this construction they're doing. So you have to get this. So I had to go, went and asked this guy. I said, you know, what? How do I get to the rental car place? And he was, I don't know if he was Jamaican. He, he, I, I think he might have been just a little retarded. I'm not really sure. But he kept saying, the Red Road bus. The Red Road. And I, th- I thought he was saying Red Rum first from, like, you know, The Shining. The Red movie. Road. Yeah. Red Road. Red Road. Red Road, Red he was Rose, saying. And I'm like, I don't, and Johnny's, you know, Johnny doesn't help out in these instances. So I'm thinking maybe the guy's speaking Spanish. I'm like, Johnny, do you know what this guy's talking about? And he's like, you know, Johnny's like get, getting embarrassed at this point because I'm, I'm getting loud with the guy. I'm like, look, I don't know what you're talking about. Can, speak slowly. Red route. Route. I said, route? The red route? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we had to go out and get the red route bus. Uh, and we take that. And, the, and next thing I know, they're, drop, they're like dropping us off in the front of the uh, marine terminal. LaGuardia is a very weird airport because it's small, but there's like people think there's only like really, you know, two terminals the main B terminal, and then there's like a CD, which is Delta. So I took this, I was, I got off at C, and I, and, and they dropped me it, but there's a terminal one. It's called the Marine Terminal. I don't know why they call it the Marine Terminal. There must be a reason, but there's a lot of the shuttle flights go out there, like the shuttles to um, Boston. We'll go out of there, and I'm like, "Why are you guys dropping me off here? I need to go to Hertz." No, you got to get a the, you got to get the Hertz bus now from here. I said, "So I got to take the it bus to the bus." To the, it only goes to the Marine. Yes. So it dropped me there, and then I had to wait for the Hertz bus to pull up, and then the Hertz bus took me to the Hertz, whatever. And uh, so on the way back, when I when I had to reverse that whole scenario, when I was on the red route bus uh, on the way back to the terminal <laughs> this morning. I asked the guy, I said, what the hell is going on here? I said, he goes, oh, this is a big, big production. They're, re, they're rebuilding new terminals. I'm like, what do you mean? They just redid them. He's like, no, they're knocking those down, and they're, gonna, they're putting up new ones in the parking lot. So they're going to redo all the terminals. They're going to make them supposedly super modern. I don't know how they're going to do it. And they're, and they're getting rid of the old terminals, and they're making that more runway. Because if, if you ever landed in LaGuardia, you'll know you, you're almost landing in the water pretty much because there's no l- runway space. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I'm like, so they're going to knock over. Why would they redo them this past year if they're going to knock them down? He's like, because they get a lot of money every year. He goes, if you go, they don't use the money, then the next year. It goes year, back. They don't, no, they, they don't give them the money next year. So they have to spend the money because I noticed they paint. You know how usually when you walk out of the terminal in New York, it's disgustingly dirty on the ground and you're like, ugh, you know you're in New yeah. York. And if you ever yeah. get out in California or Florida, it's always so beautiful and clean. Well, they repainted all the sidewalks outside the terminals. It actually looks like California now. It actually looks pretty nice. How all in time to tear it? the fucking thing down next year. Well, you know? give them some time. It'll get dirty again. Yeah, I'm sure. So that's, I remember, uh, remember. We were in Australia once at the airport. Hmm. And we were, we were mind boggled how they could keep it so clean. Yeah, it's unbelievable yeah new york is like a it, it, it looks like a sewer when you get off and i that's the one thing i always hated about the airports and they're depressing because they're dirty like there's cigarette butts on the floor and people are just nasty you know in, in general and, how, and and it just doesn't look like they clean it i don't know uh, i don't know if they paint these other sidewalks more frequently or if they just don't get as much dirt from snow and rain and whatever else it goes on there 
So I, uh, yes, I landed. I, um, I went and got a haircut because the girl cuts my hair. She uh, is is way better than the girls oh, you, cutting you kept, my hair. She's here. been doing it, yeah. And she's been doing it how long? Twenty yeah. years? Thirty years? Yeah, like probably like twenty twenty years. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. I got a haircut from. I felt better, and uh, I went and saw my dad, who has no clue that I do not live in New York. He's like, oh, well, that's good. He doesn't have to worry you. about it. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't feel mm-hmm. bad. I don't. I feel like you know he's not missing. I'm not missing anything with him. He's like, oh, what brings you over here? I said, uh, oh, you remember? I, he's like, no, what? what? I said, um, I don't, you know, I don't live here. He goes, oh, you don't? <laughs> no clue. No clue. And so I sat and talked with him. He was in a good mood. He was actually glad I came over because when I got there, he thought he was, uh, he thought he was in, some, in Vietnam or something like that. He's like, what are, what are you? Oh, he said, what are you doing here? I said, what do you mean what am I doing here? I'm coming to visit you. He's like, why, in this, why would you come to this? How do you know even know I'm in this house? I said, because this is where you lived the last 45 years. He's like, no, it isn't. I just got dropped off here. Like, <laughs> like I don't know, you know, when you get demented, I don't know, like, where these scenarios come up. But I think my dad, because he's a writer, is, is creating way more entertaining scenarios than, than the other people whose memories are leaving them. You know, I mean, yeah, he, like, how does your, yeah, does your dad so, make up he, crazy scenarios like this? No, he just obsesses about, like... Uh, I'll give you an example is is um, about two months ago, he was going nuts about dental floss. Right. And I had a meeting with the people who are on the, uh, the unit and they said, uh, you know, he's going crazy about the dental floss. And I said, I know how we can just drive you nuts about something. So I said, did you get him the dental floss? And they said, well, we don't supply that, <laughs> meaning it's not one of like toilet paper oh toothpaste. God. Yeah. And I said, really, how's that working out for you? I mean, can you cough up the dollar? It costs 10 grand here a month. You spent 10, you grand, cough up 10 the, grand a month? No, no, no. Insurance wow. covers a lot of it, but we cough up, we siblings a lot. That's great. Uh, wow. I didn't realize it was that expensive. And so, yeah, it's absolutely insane. It's insane. And so I, I said, you know, for a dollar, I don't know what a percentage is that is of $10,000, but um, you can go and shut him up, and I am sure it's less stress on the staff than if you don't just. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I would go buy it if I was the staff and spend my own money just to shut your dad up. Yeah. I said, I, I just have a 45-minute drive. I mean, he can call me on it, and I can bring it down for him. But, right. I mean, just, just why don't someone just pick him up the floss? Right. So Tell someone they, to lay it out. You'll give him five bucks when you get there. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure, that was like two months ago. Sure enough, uh, he's out of that floss. When I saw him on Tuesday, uh, he was complaining about the floss again. Oh, he, 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 he's Except he doesn't. Flossing. Yeah, Dave, I, sh- I was actually going to tape him for you. Get on him my on phone the faucets that I use. You know those faucets I'm always using? Yeah. You got to get him on those. You can <laughs> reuse too, those a couple of times. No, he, he's too old to be able to learn something new like that. <laughs> he might but like he, them. He, does, he might obsess he does, with those things. Tell him Dave. Dave he does. <laughs> He does not push the button. He <laughs> screams at the top of his lungs for for help. <laughs> he does not push the button. You know what I mean? Like oh, for for help, he'll yeah. scream at the top of his lungs right. for help. But, so so does he? So he doesn't make. I, I'm convinced. My, I think my dad, because of his his writing background and his creativity, creates these crazy scenarios. No, he doesn't. He just he just obsesses about things. Yeah, but that's I, his I think my dad is doing that to himself. I think he's creating these crazy scenarios. I don't think anyone else does that. I think that that's like unique to my dad. He's in like, I mean, these the stories that he's telling me they're better than the, the books he's written in the past. I'm like, you should write Ooh, this well. stuff down. Yeah. You should write them down. I'm trying to make yeah, I should. Book. I should write them down. You're right. It's, I should write a story about a guy going insane. You know, like losing his mind. And, and, and but but in during the while you're reading the book, you won't know the guy's going insane. You'll just think that he's living these crazy adventures. And then at the end of the story, you'll realize that he's in a in a yeah. He's in actually a, in a yeah, home memory loss for people yeah, who well, have not memory in- loss. You know, <laughs> that would be a good little. Uh, Kick. I just gave away the, the, the story now, so whoever, all our listeners will know when the movie comes out. We'll say, "Oh, we know the ending already." Yeah. They, they told us about it. So we were uh, we had Bros vs. Pros this past Saturday. It was hugely successful. Um, we held it at ProFit Gym in Deer Park, New York, hosted by Alex Luca, the uh, great owner of the gym, and her dad. 
And uh, they really did a number with that gym. I mean, you've been there probably before. That's when you know when Jerry Scalise used to own the Deer Park Golds, and now it's uh, yeah. it's called Profit. But she redid that gym, and uh, I'm telling you, there's people. They got thousands and thousands of members there. There was, there was probably 500 people there watching Bros vs Pro. She had a little, you know, she had food and this and that. And uh, there's a girl there who makes some. Um, cupcakes out of uh, protolized pudding my species protolized pudding um actually mm-hmm. you know what they're in my suitcase i gotta take them out of there she gave me a whole thing of them and uh, we did a little video on them they're un- i wish she could send these things because they only last like three or four days so you, you re- it's really you have to kind of just buy them there but they're amazing they, they look like you know the, the most unbelievable gourmet you know unhealthy looking uh, what are they like cupcakes? a low carb obviously they're high yeah they're low carb they, they're mostly the protein that she uses and she just flavors them up with like different spices and stuff like that and cinnamon and like well she had a cinnamon a cinnamon roll one and she had a, a chocolate one like a chocolate fudge one and then she had like a vanilla but with chocolate pudding on top of it it's, and it was all made from the protolize it was freaking unbelievable how she did it so and then i did a cooking segment with the girl kathy there who's uh she has the little food cafe there and she she taught me how to you know you probably don't know either how to the, the right way to cook a chicken breast you know because chris a lot of people don't know i didn't know the, the rules to cooking a chicken breast did you know there were rules i didn't i i would cook a chicken breast if how i was home it? i would just put it i would if i was home i'd put pam on a pan mm-hmm. and i would cook it on the like the pan and if it got too dried out i'd add water and it would like yeah you yeah, know yeah, yeah. You, I, Steam no, up and I put the yeah. cap on it, and it probably come out dry anyway. She other than that, I I put on the cookout grill up. The rules: you have to put an acid with the oil. So you're supposed to use a little vinegar uh, in there to or something acidic. You know, it could be even wine uh, when you're cooking a chicken breast because it does something to the pH. I don't know. And the oil, obviously, you don't want to put too much, but you know. And then she, you have to cut them thin, and she was teaching me how to use a knife properly and. How to season them with a little salt and some garlic powder, and um, and how you, you you put them on one side and you don't flip them until the the side that you actually can see starts turning white, and then you flip them for like thirty seconds to a minute, and then it's done. And I'm telling you, it was the tastiest chicken breast I've ever had in my life. That's how good it was. It was it was the moisture level was unbelievable and it was cooked through it wasn't like raw or anything like that it wasn't like a rare chicken breast it was it was amazing so when, when johnny puts this video up guys i know you all of my listeners out there will definitely check it out i'm telling you it's such small little cool rules that, that that just like you know you just you would think you would know them but, but no one ever has taught you how to do it the proper way and uh, so i learned a little bit you know i always like if there's a day goes by that i actually learned something i i, I I'm very happy because there's not that much I could learn at this point in my life because, you know, you start getting closed-minded to these things. So I always like when someone knows more about something than I do and they can teach me something. So that went well. And then, obviously, the Bros vs. Pros was hugely successful as well. This was Bros vs. Pros 29. I can't believe we've had 29 of them. We're going to be going on to 30. Uh, Jimmy the Bull Pelleccia showed up. There was a lot of – a lot of uh, – Dave Palumbo, RX Muscle uh, supporters there. Let's put it that way. And uh, Chris Lentino won the men's bench press for reps. I believe he did 55 reps. Uh, David Caratura, 52 years of age, won the under 200-pound category. And the deadlift for reps, Neri Crentraro, who's probably done more bros versus pros than any other person, I think, in, in the history. I think he's entered more of them than he, – he's done almost all of them. He won. And Ryan Palmberg won the under 200 pound category, um, and he's a client of mine. So he came down from uh, up in almost Massachusetts, and so he he came down and did some great job. And Colette Nelson picked up the win in the women's uh, bench press and deadlift for reps. As always, she defended her uh, titles, and she went home with all the cash. So uh, all was good in the world, you know. You got a 1090, what do you, W9 them, 1099 them? <laughs> yeah, I think I Was it 1099 or W9? <laughs> I don't even know. Man, I handles all that. But, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, but, you know, we, we gave out prize. I haven't actually figured out how to break it down, but I have to sit down and uh, divide up, you know, all our prize money we have and then divvy it out to these people. But uh, it was a good, you know, look, it's very exciting because people go there and they're all screaming. And, you know, uh, Rita, uh, my friend Justin's wife was there, Rita Pentiata who is making a comeback in the women's physique. She had been off for three years. She hasn't really competed. She, she was there. She, she competed. 
uh, she threw down. And uh, oh, you know, I forgot. No wait, I, I'm I'm completely blocking out uh, what happened. Neri Contrera did not win. He did not win. You know who won the deadlift for reps? My IFBB pro who filled in for Akeem Williams at the last minute. The one and only George Peterson. Our NPC National that? Classic Physique Champion. I got him down at the last yeah, minute. I, I, and I, I had the it. controversial interview with him. Dave, yes, you know, did. I know. And uh, he what showed did? up what do? and he fucking killed it. You know, I couldn't believe it. And you know what the funny thing was? I made him do the bench. He thought he was done. He went and worked out. He had squatted 500 for like eight reps. Came back, and then he found out. He heard me announce. What do you squat? What do you squat? What do you squat? What do you squat? He squatted. He squatted 500 pounds for eight reps. And then he heard me announcing nice. that he was going next. He comes running over to my friend Justin, who's his trainer. And he's like, well, what's going on? And Justin's like, y you got to, you got to, Dave's got you deadlifting. You're the last guy to go. You're the bro. You, I mean, you're the pro. You got to defend the, the, the honor of the IFBB pros. He goes, I didn't know I had to do the deadlift too. So he, he got himself all psyched up. He went over there and he, and he did it. And, and the guy just was like a machine. And he, he banged it out, and he won. And I, I completely – see, I, I'm losing my mind, but my dad is wearing off of me. Uh, Neri <laughs> won the week the time before, but Neri, he, he beat Neri. Neri would, would have won if, if George wasn't there. So George defended the honor of the IFBB pros and it it's pulled scary. out last-minute you know, uh, victory there. It's kind of scary for the other classic guys when you know that the guy who's also going to be a damn good classic bodybuilder <laughs> might be the strongest. This this guy is is dangerous. I'm telling you. I know that's what I, that's my way of saying. He is know. gonna be super dangerous at that New York Pro. I I don't think anyone's gonna beat him. To be honest with you, I don't know who's yeah. going in the show, but he's gonna be. No, I I, I saw him. Dangerous. I saw him. I did the like I said. I did the interview with him um, at when he won the nationals. Yeah. Uh, and I did know his name during the interview because someone else was interviewing him. Whoever interviewed him didn't even know who he was, even though he won the show. And <laughs> Um, you know, he, he looked good on stage and sometimes you don't know, like backstage, you know, what these guys really look like, whether it be a, you know, open men's pro bodybuilder or nationals winner or a classic right. guy. Right. And he was so impressive backstage. I mean, that's why I thought it was a great interview because I was so impressed with him. His you know, waist is, is tiny. His waist is insane. Right. From the front and the back. Right? Yeah. No, he's you know and I mean? he's got a great back. He's got awesome arms. He's got good legs. I don't think he has any weak body parts. I, I don't know. It's, Lonnie Teeper might say maybe his calves are not that good. But I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen his calves. But he he's very impressive. And you know what? He can grow into this, you know, since they raised the weight class in, in the pros. And the pros already had a higher weight class limit for his height in that classic physique division. He is going to be able to put on 10, 15 pounds for the, you know, so he competed at like 176 at the Nationals, but I think he could be like uh, 190 or almost 200 pounds for you know something like that. I think he'd be 190. Yeah, it was shocking how it, it was shocking how light he was at the Nationals as yeah. well on the scale. Yeah, because he didn't look light at all. No, no, he didn't look light, and believe me, backstage, I mean, he was a classic guy. Yeah. Right. So that means yeah. the, the the guys from the bodybuilding were floating around backstage, and he was mm -hmm. floating around backstage. Yeah. And that that's what the conversation was about is, okay. What makes you classic? Because he could have won whatever class he was in that day. I thought. Sure. You got it. Look, you know, I made him pose. Pounds. I actually made him pose on the camera, like uh, after he did his bench press, because I figured he'd be all pumped up. And he was huge. He was <laughs> huge. And but good shape. His waist is teeny, you know. And he's just he was in a tank top. I was like, holy mackerel! This guy looks like he's a pro bodybuilder. He doesn't look like he's a classic guy. He looks like he's a, you know, a legitimate open pro, you know. I wonder how he would do in the two twelve no, class. I think he would do great in two twelve. I, 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 you know, I, I, I was asking him. I think that the essential, you know, question for him is what makes him classic versus bodybuilding because I think he can do either. I think I, he can do yeah. two twelve, and I think he can do uh, classic. Well, you know what it is. Not many and, guys, Chris, have the ability to cross over like that because most guys that are that look big are big, and they can't make the weight class for classic for their height. He's bone. I don't think he, I think his bones are hollow because he he looks like he's two hundred and he's actually one seventy. You know, so uh, on stage. So, I, I that that's uh, an advantage that not many people have. You know, he can do both. He can fit into the weight. What class, was his class. weight here? 
I think he was over 200 pounds. He was like 210 or something like that. You know? Yeah, that's 215. huge. 215. And he was, think about it. He was one of the yeah. lightest guys up there doing that, that deadlift for reps. Most of these guys were 300 pounds, 275, 280. You know, and, and he still, with 315 pounds, blasted them out like he was lifting feathers off the ground. Yeah. Amazing. Tells yeah, you, definitely be a, tells you a what threat genetics, to me. I'll tell you the, the advantage of genetics, you know. If you got them, you know, they're, they're a gift, that's for sure. And if you use that gift and you nurture that gift, you're nearly unbeatable, I always say. Uh, most guys who are successful are because they work hard. It's not because they have the best genetics in the sport. It seems that the people with the best genetics don't work as hard. But when you get a guy or girl who has great genetics and they work hard, unbeatable. Unbeatable. Ronnie Coleman, Lee Haney, you know, Dorian Yates, even Jay Cutler. I mean, people who maximized their genetics and, you know, Dexter Jackson. You know, I, 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 I talked to Dave Brule the other night. He texted me something. And I told Dave Brule, you know, who knows Jay really well. I, right. I said, you know, a lot of these guys, this day and age, Dave, they, they tell me, like, oh, I'm not getting all my meals in, which is, you know, kind of strange to me because, you know, if you want to be a, a really good bodybuilder or a great bodybuilder, you can't miss meals. It no. just seems like it, it doesn't make sense to me. And he laughed and he texted me back. He said, Jay, as you know, would finish a meal and he'd at least be thinking about the next meal, if not starting to think about when he's going to prepare it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I and told, I said, well, I told you that exactly right. I used to leave Christmas dinner and I'd be calling the Chinese restaurant for to order my next meal. True. Yeah. You got to be. You always. You cannot miss meals. It's, that's not an option because, you know, that's just laziness. And to me, not putting on the muscle I wanted to put on or, you know, not dieting properly because I screwed up or it wasn't organized, that's, that's shame on you. That's... That's yeah. like uh, you're giving up it's something you can control. You're getting you up got, free. Yeah, you're giving up free, free whatever you want to call it. You know, that's like freebies they're giving you. You get. You know, you can't. You know, predict how fast you can grow, and you can't. You know, fix your genetics. But man, you could certainly get those meals in. And if you miss those meals or those workouts, you know, then you're a dummy. You're a one big dummy. Give me a typical day, Dave, of your at your highest weight for you, you, for, what you, you know what eating. i don't even remember that's how long it's going i'm sure you don't it was yeah i used to pack meals with me when i originally when i first was you know before i could afford to buy eat out a lot but um i would you know i'd have my breakfast i'd have eggs and, and oatmeal and i then i'd be packing you know my usually i bring chicken breasts or or you know tuna i was a big tuna guy uh, and I would mix that with like, you know, and rice and Tupperware containers and throw like handfuls of nuts in there and just and maybe a tablespoon of like olive oil at the time because there wasn't no one knew about Mac oil back then. And I would just mix that up and I would make like four containers of that with me and I would take it with me and I would I would throw like, you know, five packets of Metrex in my bag to make shakes. And if I went out, I would, you know, no matter where I was, I had my shaker bottle or I had my food with me and I would just, you know, eat. I knew every two hours, every two hours I had to eat or drink a shake, eat or drink a shake, eat or drink a shake. And, you know, and then when I got back at night, I would have, you know, I would cook the rest of my meals. I'd have dinner, you know, and then probably another meal before bed, you know, and probably guzzle a shakedown, you know, right before I, you know, actually went into my bedroom. Uh, so I, it was nonstop. It was, it was six, five or six shakes a day, four to five meals a day, every single day, consistently, you know. Uh, sometimes when I would diet, this is true. I remember when I worked for Metrix one year. For, it was like maybe two years I did this. They had these uh, chocolate chip cookie dough bars. I don't know if you remember them. Made with the same protein that was they were, in the powder. They were incredible. They were, they were absolutely incredible. I would put them in the refrigerator. And two of I, I was eating 12 times a day. I was having like five shakes, I think, five meals. And then I was having uh, two of these bars. And I would sit in front of the TV. I, I remember the, to this day. And I would eat these bars. And you would think that I was eating like heaven on earth it was like i was sitting eating real cookie dough uh you know mix and i would just eat those bars little piece i would break little pieces at a time i'd suck on the chocolate chips and i would and i'm, and I'm telling you i got <laughs> they were great i didn't gain any weight from them I, I lost weight from these things and it was like i had two of them every day i looked forward to those things man oh it was like it was like i was having an ice cream sundae and that was how i did it you know and i never missed uh 
And I never, all the meals were small, and I never really ate high carbs, so I was always hungry. I was ready for the next meal. You know, even though it was 12 servings a day, feedings a day, I was always ready for that next meal. Um, and it was great. It was, you know, it worked well. There you go. Twelve times. No, there's 12 times, and I know people who are having a hard time eating five or six <laughs> times. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? They're, they're, they're good bodybuilders, too. Yeah. They're like, I'm not getting my meals in. Yeah. Ed Connors. So. Say a lot. Of, that's a lot of toilet paper. Twelve meals a day, right? Wasn't that his complaint? Yeah, he would complain that the yeah, guys the who clogged, stayed in his clogged. house. The on, yeah, the, on, the only problem with buying bills staying at his house, he said, was calling Rotor Rotor <laughs> and always having to have a an open account at the plumbing place, <laughs> and I think crazy girlfriends, right? Yeah, yeah. I I put an end to that when I when I went there with my girlfriend. I think I was the only person who ever stayed there with a girlfriend. And then he banned made a rule no girlfriends there because we were fighting because I was dieting. But but the truth is no. He used to say that he knew each bodybuilder and how much toilet paper they went through, which was kind of a little weird. But you know, like who are the big toilet paper offenders? You know, I don't know if I was. I don't I don't think I ever heard my name listed in the toilet paper offenders because I'm a very who efficient, stated it? I'm an efficient wiper. I don't over I don't over wipe. You know how some people use like wads and wads of toilet paper to wipe. I, I can use a small amount and still get the get the cleaning job done, you know. So I think that a lot of guys over over, you know, wipe and then they clog the toilet bowl up. Who stayed at Ed's place the longest? Probably Jimmy Quinn, right? Yeah, I think Jim Quinn. You know, you know what the funny thing is, I, he might a lot still of people, be there. And this is a lot of bodybuilders might not know this, but you know, don't go buy that like triple ply toilet paper. That's not good for your not good for your sewer. Uh, it's not good for your septic tank either. You got to get the like one. I get the Scott one single ply. It's like a thousand sheets per roll. It's not abrasive at all. You know, people think these like the single ones are not. You know, oh, it's not good, cushy enough. My my butt. No, you get the Scott single ply. It's a thousand sheets. It'll last you forever. It's very thin. The, the, so the advantage is, if, even if you use it a little too much, it's not going to clog your toilet up. If you use the triple ply and then you use too much of it, it's like a it's like a a, a wad of of clog it just instantly clogs the drain and the worst thing you, you know if you poop in the in the toilet and you get a clogged thing you got to put the plunger into the poop it's a disgusting so i'm telling you you'll never ever clog your toilet if you use scott you can go to the boat uh where boat ones are good too yeah they, well they self disintegrate because the, yep. the the toilets are different on, on yeah boats. Well, you have to but they're but they're a little more abrasive those but i'm telling you scott the little bit more thing. expensive too yeah yeah, well, yeah, because they, they're charging you because anything in a boat is more expensive. You know, that. so that's my uh, that's my tip of the day: how to get the right toilet paper. Scott, single ply. I'm telling you, it's a thousand sheets in one thing. It'll last you a long time. I I could one roll can last me two weeks maybe. Um, you know, girls do use a lot more toilet paper than men do. You know that, right? No, I didn't know that. Well, you live with a woman. You're married. Don't you notice your wife well, uses more I mean, toilet paper than you? You probably don't I, even go to I the usually, bathroom because you only eat once a day. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't even pay attention to those things. Do you poop? How would you know day? that? Of course I do. I'm very regular. Every day you go. Every day, same time. Wow. And what do you go once a day? That's my, my No, that was my my cancer doctor's like the number one question. If you go to the bathroom the same time every day, chances are a lot of the good things are happening. That's what he used to say. Do you go once or twice? Once. Really? Yeah. Because one meal. It. One meal. One once to the can <laughs> with one meal, dude. <laughs> yeah, you don't eat a lot. You don't eat a lot. <laughs> so yeah, you know what the truth is? Yeah, um, a lot of people don't go to the bathroom regularly, Chris, and a lot of people are over wipers. And I'm telling you, and that gives you hemorrhoids too. Uh, every every person I've ever put on Fiberlize, you my you know my nutri species nutrition fiber supplement, dual fiber supplement with the soluble and insoluble fiber in it. Every person I've put on that product has told me that, that if they had hemorrhoids or any kind of irritation in it, gone. No problems. Never had another problem after using that product because it moves the waste out of your body without you having to strain and damage those hemorrhoidal veins that run through your rectum there. Okay, When you, when you overexert, you make those veins swell. And what happens is they can, they can, annu they, it's almost like an aneurysm. They rupture. Or they just, you know, they, they balloon out, and then, then they, you'll never get rid of them after. Then you're going to have to get them lasered off. So, now sometimes if you catch them quickly and you start a good fiber supplement, you can reverse it and they'll, and they'll go back. But um, you just don't want to get hemorrhoids to begin with. Don't wait. I'm telling you, 
you know I never steer you guys wrong. Get on a good psyllium based and insoluble fiber as well based fiber supplement. Take it twice a day, at least once a day, but twice a day is better. Um, I highly recommend you use my FiberLize product. Uh, if you want, I'll give you guys all. Uh, I have a coupon code. It's uh, A is in Apple, P is in Paul. Or actually, A is in Amanda, P is in Palum. Oh, AP25. Get 25% off if you buy the uh, FiberLize at the SpeciesNutrition.com website store. But I, I promise you, you will thank me in your later years when you do not have hemorrhoids and everything's working good and you don't have colon cancer. And on that little uh, diatribe, Chris, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I have, a, I have a good update. We're going to do some Ask Dave and Ask Chris questions because uh, people have been telling me that I, I've been promising and we haven't done it. But I also want to talk about a new study that came out where they're, uh, they, the, I'll give you guys the number one blood work test that you can get that will be the, the most accurate predictor of your cardiac risk. No one's getting it done. I'm not even getting it done. I haven't got it done. And uh, someone sent me this, one of, my, uh, one of our listeners, one of the people that I'm, I kind of uh, relate to in, the, in their industry. And you know what? I watched the video. It was a very long, drawn-out video explaining the science and everything. But it made perfect sense, and uh, it's, it's interesting. So, guys, stay tuned. When we come back, more enlightenment here on Heavy Muscle Radio. A legendary name in hardcore supplementation. Iron Mag Labs. 100% original, patent pending Andro Compound. The most effective, hardcore, groundbreaking bodybuilding supplements in the world. In the world. Iron Mag Labs. Revolutionizing hardcore supplementation for more than a decade. Visit IronMagLabs.com. IronMagLabs.com. Hi, I'm Dave Palumbo, and I just had a protein shake made with Quest Nutrition's new salted caramel protein powder. And I can tell you this, it's on a whole new level. It's a total reinvention of the protein shake. The taste is incredible, and its creamy texture and richness make it taste like a real caramel milkshake. It's incredibly low carb, less than one gram of sugar, and 22 grams of protein in every serving. No soy, and it's gluten-free. Just add water, ice, a scoop of protein, and shake it up. It's that easy. I actually look forward to drinking this shake. And Quest Nutrition has got a total of seven different flavors. They come in convenient single-serving packets so you can mix and match. Check out loveyourproteinpowder.com for more information on Quest Protein Powders and some delicious shake inspirations. Welcome back to Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo talking with Chris, the technician, Aceto. And um, Chris, uh, this, I saw this great video. I kind of teased it before the break uh, about, uh, you know, a lot of people are always asking about blood work and uh, explain the blood work. I, I probably read more blood work than, than most doctors do because everyone who I, you know, either I work with and I don't work with send me blood work and ask me, am I going to die? Because, you know, a lot of these doctors don't know how to read the blood work properly. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that a lot of people are concerned about, especially guys, you know, over the age of 35, is, is their, you know, cardiac risk profile. In other words, am I going to get coronary heart disease, clogging my arteries, you know, um, because a lot of bodybuilders notice that when they take anabolic steroids, it screws up their cholesterol profiles. Now, what does that mean? Well, this, there's really two main, I guess you could say, cholesterol markers that we, that we modify, that we kind of monitor, I guess, on blood work, one being called HDL cholesterol and one being called LDL cholesterol. Now, just to give you a little background for the listeners who might not understand what that means, cholesterol can't just travel in the bloodstream because the cholesterol is fat-soluble and the blood is water-soluble, obviously, and they don't mix. It's like putting you know, oil and, and vinegar in the same you know, beaker. It does, they, they settle out. So in order to make the cholesterol soluble in the bloodstream so that it can be utilized, uh, the cholesterol travels um, enwrapped, encapsulated in, in a protein sheath, and it's called a lipoprotein. The lipo part is the fat part, the cholesterol part. The protein is the protein that surrounds this sheath. And there's different types of these lipoproteins, more than two types, but the two types that we kind of monitor are LDL, or low-density lipoprotein, and HDL, or 
high-density lipoprotein. And the HDLs have been the ones we call the good cholesterol, and the LDLs are the ones we call the bad cholesterol. And, you know, according to the news, you know, research, uh, it might not be warranted to, to call them that because, you know, it's interesting, but, you know, we all think of LDL cholesterol carriers as the cholesterol carriers that, that, that go around the body. And this, I've always taught this to people and dump cholesterol, like almost like a litter bug, dumping cholesterol all over the place. And that's why if you have too much LDL, you can clog your arteries, you know, because the stuff can get into the artery walls and it can cause, you know, clots and, and, and blockages. But the LDL cholesterol actually also delivers this cholesterol to the liver. And when the cholesterol carry, the, the, the LDLs get to the liver, the liver breaks it down. So actually, not all LDL is bad. So you, some of the LDL is actually doing good stuff in the body. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that. So sometimes just measuring LDL numbers uh, or, or your readings is not that accurate. Now, HDL cholesterol, on the other hand, we always think of as the good cholesterol, the cholesterol that goes around the body, cleans it up, almost like a vacuum cleaner sucks up the rogue cholesterol that's all over the place and brings it back to the liver and, and, and lets the liver you know, take care of it. Um, in essence, uh, or from what I understand, actually some of it is given to the LDL cholesterol that brings it back to the liver to break it down. Ironically enough, I didn't even know that. And, and one of the things I also brought up to a lot, and we've talked about on this show, because this was my understanding of the whole situation, was that the, LH, the HDL cholesterol, uh, and LDL for that matter, have different particle sizes. And we always thought that the large particle size was the most important for HDL cholesterol. And, and, the, and the analogy I gave people was that if you have a bigger vacuum cleaner, it's more efficient at sucking things up. So even though your HDL numbers may be down, if you have very large particle size, that that could override that. And unfortunately, they, <laughs> it's just proven that that's not the case. Same thing with LDL cholesterol. If you have, the, you know, they said if you had, you know, larger versus you know, smaller particle size that would make a difference, and that's not the case either. The case happens to be that the most accurate predictor of what your, your, your cholesterol you know, issues might be is the actual number of particles in the LDL and of the HDL. In other words, how many particles you actually have of it. Not that, it doesn't matter if it's they're big or they're small. The particle size, uh, the particle number is way, way more important. The problem is, how do you count the numbers of HDL and LDL, you know, particles? It's a very mm -hmm. difficult thing to do. They never were able to do it, but they can do it now using this uh, nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR studies. They can actually get the actual number of these particles that you have in your per deciliter of blood. You know, it's, it's incredible how they do these things, you know. Uh, and they're showing now that the future blood work will be just like that. It, they will, people will be getting their actual LDL and HDL particle numbers read. And if your HDLs are high, that's going to be good. It doesn't matter if they're hot, big or small particles. And if your LDL is, is, is um, low, then that's good. If it's too high, that's not good. Uh, and it's going to change the way we kind of evaluate, you know, what we're doing. That's why you ever see, you, you can see a, there's people out there that have gotten heart attacks and this is the studies they did. 50% of the people who have cari you know, cardiac, cardiac events, especially, especially heart attacks, 50% of them don't even have high cholesterol levels. So how the hell did they get clots in their, in their coronary arteries? Mm -hmm. Good point. So I, don't, I believe that a lot of these remnants we're seeing on blood work, that the steroids kind of skew a little bit, raising LDLs, lowering HDLs. I don't necessarily necessarily think it's bad because otherwise we'd be seeing a lot more heart attacks in bodybuilders. And while we do see heart attacks in some bodybuilders, we don't see it in a ton of bodybuilders. So I don't think that it's steroids are actually making uh, or causing an incidence or an increased incidence of, of coronary heart disease. Now, I know Mike Monterazzo, may he rest in peace, who's not with us, would think otherwise. But, you know, heart disease ran in his family. So he had a genetic predisposition for it. And when you have a genetic predisposition for it and then you add in, you know, additional risk factors, obviously, you know, he probably would have gotten a heart attack anyway. He probably would have had coronary blockages anyway, you know, even if he didn't bodybuild or take anabolic steroids. So, well, I guess how many how many people, hold on for a sec, how many people do you know? I mean, I don't, people don't share that information with people right. generally, but how many people do you know, 35 to 45, who are bodybuilders who have had heart attacks? And then compare that to... I guess the general population, 35 to 45. Right. Well, you would think the bodybuilders are healthier because we eat better, but, you know, and then other people would say, well, yeah, we're but, not, you know, we I, take steroids. Yeah, I know that, but a doctor, a doctor would go like this. Nope, you could have a fat, you know, 
never working out, ever 35 to 45 year old who's less susceptible to a heart disease or a heart attack than a bodybuilder 35 to 45 years old who's been using, you know, 300 milligrams or 500 milligrams of test a week for 20 years. Right, right. Well, I, you know what? I, I still believe that a lot of this heart issues stuff is, is diet related. It's, I believe, to me, it's all diet related. And there's a genetic predisposition there, don't get me wrong, but it's very diet related because, um, you know, I was worried, you know, when I went for my, um, whatever they did, the cardiac cath to check out my coronary arteries, that I was going to have a blockage. I was convinced of it because I'm like, well, I eat McDonald's, you know, every day for day years. But, you know, everything else I've ever eaten, I've always was a very clean eater. I always, you know, uh, I'm a nutcase. You know, I, I eat the right yeah. fats. I do this. I do everything right. You know, the only thing I did was McDonald's once a day. But I never had a, a morsel of body fat on my body. I'm like, I just can't see it. But you know what? Maybe I did. My dad had trip, you know, quadruple bypass, you know, when he was in his 70s. So I, when I got tested and they said, you have no, your, your vessels are completely clean, I was like, oh, thank God. But it makes sense, you know. It's just, it was scary not to know, but, you know, I, I truly believe that. The, but I, because I know bodybuilders that don't eat well. You know, Lee Priest admittedly used to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know, every day, you know, in his mm -hmm. off season. I'm sure that didn't do well for his, you know, <laughs> coronary risk profile. Um, I don't know what his issues are, but, but you know. It is what it is, you know. The bottom line is, if you're going to eat like a pig, you know, and you're going to eat, you're going to eat sugars, and you're going to do, you know, consume things that are pro-inflammatory in the body, and you're going to incite cardiac events, you, you're going to have, you're going to have issues. So, uh, my the point I'm taking home, I want people to take home, is that sometimes don't get all unnerved about your blood work, especially if you know you eat well and you train, you train hard, and you know if your HDL is very low or your LDL is a little high, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get my panties in a bunch. You know, the, the key is how can we get these new testing methodologies incorporated into, into regular blood work? That's what I got to find out. So uh, the person who sent me the link to this is, is involved in some new testing uh, protocol. I'm going to try to find out how I can get some information out to bodybuilders, how they can get tested so they can test their LDL and HDL particle numbers. And remember, that's the, 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 the more accurate way to assess this. Um, we're going to do some Ask Dave and Ask Chris questions, but before we do, I just want to mention that um, a lot of people have been asking me about the, uh, the next Guru course and uh, when that's going to be, Secrets of Becoming a Diet Guru that I give. And the, the answer is I can't give you an answer yet because I don't know when my, my new offices are going to be finished and I, want, I, I can't schedule it and then have people pay and then I have to pull out. So I don't know. So I'm, I'm hoping by March we'll be in there. So. Uh, as soon as I get like a, like a like a close date, then I'll just basically just let everyone know. Okay, we're doing it March, whatever, you know, twentieth, and it's going to be in it'll probably be the first, next one will be in Florida in Cape Coral. So um, I know I know you like to limit it to how many people? Seventeen, fifteen, eighteen people a class. I got to see how many people will fit my new thing. I did twenty. I got twenty two actually when I in San Diego because I was on the when I'm on the road I like to do more because I have to pay for my expenses, but. Usually it's fifteen. I, I keep it at yeah. When, when I'm no, I mean, if you had it the weekend of the Arnold Classic, you could get like you know because people are there anyway. I'll I know, but it's, it's such a zoo that weekend. It's so we don't, you, think about it. We 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 always say we're going to meet with four hundred different people, and we never meet half of them because there's just too much going on there. No, that weekend. there's way too much going on. People say, "Can I meet with you?" I say, "No, <laughs> it's just going to be too busy." You know. I, and the day is like 10 minutes. I know you love these statistics. I want to just throw it out there. We have 69,554 subscribers on our YouTube channel now, Chris. So we're closing in on that magic 70,000 mark. And then obviously we're going to go for 80, 90. And then, of course, the 100 is the goal um, because I want to get the, the, the gold button they send you from uh, YouTube. <laughs> but uh, you guys have been really supporting the site. I know you guys are really loving all the content we put up there. That Bros vs. Pros that we did live on YouTube got is over 6,000 hits already, and it's most people haven't even finished the weekend yet. So I'm sure by Monday it's going to probably double. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's been good. I actually filmed um, a little preview with Colette Nelson on, uh, on Friday there, and we put that up. That thing got almost 4,000 hits. And you know what? I filmed also a whole episode on her with her on insulin usage. You know, because she's very progressive in her insulin usage. And we talked about what the right possibilities would be for people who are taking excessive amounts of growth hormone to prevent themselves from getting diabetes, essentially becoming a type 1 diabetic. So uh, you guys are not going to want to miss that episode. It will be out uh, this coming week. It might even be out on Monday when this, uh, this radio show airs. So that will be a, a really good one we got coming up. 
and uh, we got a lot of you know I got a new a, a new idea for a show. I don't even know if I should talk about it on here, but uh, it's going to be yeah, yeah, I don't care. I could talk about it. No one no one else is doing anything anyway. It's going to be called Best of. And we'll come up with different categories and that, that we think of the best, the best arms of all time, the best legs, the best female bodybuilder, the best whatever, you know, the best belt, weight belt, the best, you know, straps, lifting straps. And, uh, and it'll be little shows based on whatever the, it's just the best of for that particular, you know, and I'll take people's suggestions. They can send me their suggestions. And I would even maybe put a poll up on the Arcs Muscle Forums to vote for who people feel, given the category, is the best, you know, person for that uh, accolade. And then I'll, I'll analyze it, you know, in, in the way I do. I think it's going to be a popular show, so that's going to be yeah, a, that's one of my, it's new, all, my new it ideas. It sounds like uh, the iron debate without debating. Right, yeah, it's kind of just like a, it's a short hit and run. You know, a lot of people don't, sometimes, a, a lot of people like watching the long stuff because they do cardio and they listen to us, you know, rabber on, jabber on for an hour. And then some people like the quick hits, you know, like the, the six, seven, eight, ten minute video. So I got to do a little of each. I, I think that works better when you kind of spread it out that way. But uh, let me see. Look and see who's. If I got any uh, casino questions, I have hundreds of Ask Dave's. Okay. Literally, let I have. This. It's like maybe we should go every other question. Let me. Well, let's let's do yours first. Chris uh, is training each muscle once every ten days. Better for so-called hard gainers who have difficulty putting on muscle due to height or work stress. Thanks. Also, please uh, answer that part first. Is it? Should, should someone who's a hard game to train only once every 10 days? No, he should train more frequently. Okay. I think that I once think every 10... Per, a muscle group, per muscle group, not per just... Per muscle group. Yeah. No, it's not... It's, 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 I, know it's, I know there's an idea like, well, if it's, it's... It's conjecture is what it is because some people will say, well, you know, if a muscle group won't, tra won't change, that's because you might be overdoing it and that... That particular muscle doesn't recover as much as the others, so it needs more rest. I would take the complete opposite view and say, you know what, if it's that weak, then I would train it more. I would start with more, right? And then if that isn't it, then then I would go to less. Because it's either one or the two. Right. Well, either yeah, that or you're doomed, I think you do then you never make the muscle I was going to say I, I disagreed with you, but I think I think I ha now I agree with you because if you try one and it doesn't work, then go to the other. I always think if a person's a really hard trainer, I always figure they're overtraining it. Um, so I usually tell people to train weak body parts less frequently. But I but I, I understand what you say. If you try doing it more often, if it doesn't work, then obviously you go less. You know, it's trial and error. You know. All right. Second part of the question. Chris, please repeat your PCT protocol you mentioned a few months ago and why you Mine? recommended that. Oh, that was like, I, I probably stole it from Dave. It was like 500 <laughs> ACG a day. You do it every or, day. I do it like every third day, but you do it, yeah, you, okay. you divide it up. Well, it's the I same probably amount, stole though. it from you and, and reread, and I probably read the email wrong that you sent me. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. And well, it's, it's the same thing. If you do 1,500 every, or 2,000 every third day, if you do a 500 a day, it's the same thing, you know, it's just a matter of, uh, how often do you, how long do you have them do the, P, the, uh, the HCG? Four to six weeks. Oh, I see. That's a long time too. I don't have. Them yeah, you, and then I, I know because I, I think uh, I think twenty one days was like the, you know, the basic back in the day that people would do it right. For yeah. some reason, twenty one days. Well, you know what it is? I like guys to get off completely. If you, if I make them do it four to six Me weeks, too. then they're not going to go off. I know they're not going to go off after that. They're just going to go right back on a cycle again. That's why I don't let them do it that long. And then uh, some clomid, like uh, one a day for maybe. Uh, to, 14 to, to 28 days. Yeah, that's, that's about right. I agree with that too. And that didn't come from, that, that came honestly from Dave and asking other people. It was probably Bob Grushkin who told us all that. We yeah, I, just, I, we just I, made the 21 it days was Bob Grushkin. I mean, all of it was Bob, <laughs> always said it, all of it yeah. was Bob Grushkin. I just like tweaked it. Um, all right, I'm trying to read this thing. This guy kind of gave me a, a, a label and it was like a branched chain amino acid product and he wanted you to know what you thought of it, but oh, you can't. God. It's too, 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 too difficult to do. All right, let's go to the next one here. Might be too scientific. Hope all is well. Question for the technician. Do you think Trump will reduce the amount of effort that the DEA has in pursuing anabolic steroid sales similarly to how Obama pulled the DEA back on marijuana? Of course. 
Of course, he did, did, did. You know, he'd say, "Do we do we really need to prioritize uh, testosterone cypionate when we have ISIS chopping off heads of people all over the earth?" That's what he would say, right? Yeah. Something similar. To I that. think so. He, and the second part of the question was, he goes, "If so, do you think there is any chance?" He even pulls back the illegality of steroids. <laughs> he probably would want to. If he could brand it Trump steroids, he probably <laughs> yeah, he could sell them. Like right. the stakes in the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he probably would, but he, uh, I don't think – I think all those small little things, I think he probably has a libertarian view, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's – what is time. the, yeah, the impact, time. right? You know, as opposed to there's bigger fish to fry and bigger things to tackle than – than anabolic steroids, which is true, which is why to like, you know, uh, every, I, I think it's Orrin Hatch who's still in the Senate and, and I still, uh, despise him because I think he, uh, I think he was one of those senators who sponsored the, you know, steroid control act where, you know, it became what a felon to, to, to take steroids or well, just buy possess steroids them. or yeah, possess them. Possess steroids. There you go. It's control three substance, yeah. I mean, really? You know what I mean? In the whole scope of things? Well, I, you and I think it's ridiculous and because we're in this sport, but you know what I mean? It's like I, I find it ridiculous. You know, they, they, they try to ban snakes. You know, they were trying to, like, make it so that you couldn't sell snakes either you know, because the PETA people, you know, the animal rights people were saying, oh, all animals should go free. You know, like they think that, like, you know, they should everything. Well, I would like to inject my snakes with trenbolone so, so that they <laughs> piss off everyone here's a good question it's, it's, it's a little off topic but it's, it's kind of interesting uh my question this is the same derek is asking the same question my my question for the technician is how blown away do you think the founders of this country would be washington madison jefferson etc if they were transported in time to 2016 They'd have to be brought up to speed with so many developments since they'd be dumbfounded and confused to things like electricity, modern medicine, no slavery, 50 states, all the wars, iPhones, and of course bodybuilding. I always hear people say our founders would be so upset or would turn over in their graves for various things, but I think that's bull crap. I think they would be absolutely out of their minds and how their little experiment in the government flourished, especially with the size of bodybuilders. No, I, 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 I disagree. I think there would be – I think that – they were brilliant people who wrote a brilliant document called the, the Constitution, right? Yep. Uh, and that we try, at least, really hard, amongst all our flaws that we have as a country, we try to, you know, protect the Constitution. And um, after all these years, you know, what people get upset most about is constitutional law and constitutional rights and what your rights are, no matter... Um, you know, you know, no matter how big things are going on in the world, and they were visionaries. You know, in 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 that, I don't think they'd be shocked with iPhones and and all these other things that are technological advances, right. simply because um, they had a vision for where the country would be, not 20 years from now, but 200 years from now. Just like people like Steve Jobs is a visionary. He had a vision of. Uh, um, you know, what people can do 50 and 100 years from now and how technology can help people 50 and 100 years from now. Elon Musk, he's dead set on, in his lifetime, flying over to Mars and visiting his vacation home. I mean, it sounds bizarre, right? Yeah, it might happen. And it's not, it sounds shocking to me and you, but it might not be shocking to, to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so, you know, people with, you know, People who are monumental people through history, I think they have such a vision of of um, of the future and the way things change um, that they wouldn't be surprised. That said, I think those same people would probably come if you could put them in a time machine. All those people mentioned, you know, who wrote the Constitution, bring them forward. They'd still be shocked, I think, with things of. Wow, there's still people in the country who, uh, who are hungry, who are starving, or home homeless. Right. You know, I think uh, some of the societal ills. Let me ask you this question, still- Chris. Right, I got that. I just just came to me. Speaking of Mars, like if they started selling parcels of land in Mars, would you would you invest? You know, being the real estate guy you are. No, because you invest in what you know. 
So you wouldn't you wouldn't want to get in on it early on, you know. For the, obviously, it wouldn't probably benefit you, but it might no, benefit because the kids. you invest in what you know. That's why people got burned in the internet, right? Right, in two thousand stock rise when people were buying you all these internet go, stocks. You can never go wrong with real estate. Come on, man. Well, it's got to be beachfront, and I don't know if there's any beaches. In. <laughs> what if what if they create their own beach, their own waterways there? You Internal, like, inter yeah. Your kids will be I like, "Come know. on, Dad, this is for our future." You know what? I always do this. I always say that. Do what you know. You know, and when what you know when people get in trouble is when they do what they know so well that it gives them so much confidence that they they think that they can do what they don't know well. Yeah. You know, or I'll give you you know. I could come down to Florida and say, oh, look, at I did come to Florida. And my kids were, like, all excited about the snakes. And Dave does snakes and makes it look easy and makes it look like a blast and fun. And it's a little side business. And, you know, someone who's a uh, – someone could jump into that and, you know, lose their shirt if they were doing it from a business point of view, right? Because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to do what you know. And you got to do what you like. Okay. All right, another question for the mechanic. Uh, I've seen pictures of you when you were competitive bodybuilder, Chris, and you looked really good. I know this was a long time ago, but please tell the audience what made you stop competing. Um, I, I did not put into it what I thought I should be putting into it. Um, I think to be a good bodybuilder, you have to have tunnel vision. And that means... Like we talked about earlier, uh, when you finish your meal, you're already thinking about your next meal. And that was not me. Um, and you should go to bed at night, you know, dreaming about your back workout the next day. Right. And when that stuff doesn't happen anymore, you realize you're doing it, you're going through the motions. So um, either you don't love it or you have other interests. And that was... Yeah. That was with me. I didn't love it anymore, and um, I had other interests. What was your other interest at that point? Real estate? Uh, business. Business. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I guess you can do both. I mean, some people, you know, I'm, I'm amazed when somebody's like, oh, yeah, I'm up at 4, and I'm in the gym, and, you know, I'm training, and then I'm out the door from the gym at 6.30, and, you know, back home to see my kids, and then I'm out the door, and I work till 9 at night, and then I just won the Nationals. You know, it's amazing what people can do. Yeah. But personally for me, it was love lost and other interests. All right. Bonus question here from the same guy. Hypothetically, if you were competing today, which guru would you hire? By the way, this show still sucks. Um, I would probably uh, – it'd be Dave um, or <laughs> if it wasn't Dave, I'd probably – um, I always thought it'd be interesting to work with Milos because he, you know, he was helping people for a long period of time successfully, and he did it himself. I don't think that you have to do it yourself. Actually, I like to defend people who have never even competed, who are gurus, because I don't think you necessarily have to compete to be a good guru. Yeah. Because the person who I learned from never touched a weight before. Yeah, true. You know, I always thought about that. I, I, I. Myself said to myself, I wonder if I started over again in, in, in this day and age. Like if, like I started competing, and now because when I started, there were really no coaches, so everyone kind of did their own thing and just asked a lot of questions from people who competed. But like, I wonder if I started today, who would I hire? And I, I would probably, you know, probably want to hire Chris, you, Chris. But I don't know if you you probably wouldn't work with me initially, you know, because <laughs> I'd have to like build my way up, but like using someone else <laughs> and then switch, you know, like. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting question in today's site because there are so many coaches now and everyone kind of has a coach So because uh, it, it saves a lot of, you know, a lot of mistakes it saves by having a coach. All right, let's see. What do you got to ask? Ask me. Pick, the, just pick a couple of oh good ones. I know we can't I'll do just pick them right. They're all, they're all always good. Uh, uh, Dave, why do you recommend you uh, to use a Rimidex in the PCT knowing that the PCT will contain HCG and Clomid? I don't always recommend uh, a Rimidex, to be honest with you. A lot of times I don't. Uh, just some guys are really estrogenic, and the Clomid um, just is not enough because you're just blocking estrogen receptors. You're not really blocking the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So a lot of times I might keep a half a milligram of a Rimidex twice a week in, in that mix. 
Um, if the person's not very estrogenic, then I, then I don't use it. Because remember, HCG in, stimulates your testicles to produce testosterone, but a percentage of that testosterone converts to estrogen. Now, while clomid blocks the estrogen receptor, it doesn't stop that conversion process. So sometimes it's nice to have some arimidex in there. Okay. Uh, I hope this guy's still alive. It says, Dear Dave, last night I woke up because this, this was not last night. Yeah. Uh, and unable to breathe. For around a minute, I struggled to catch my breath and could taste stomach acid in the back of my throat. I was thinking I was going to pass out uh, and even die, but managed to calm myself enough to force in some deep breaths and I eventually returned to normal. My wife says it's caused from eating before bed, but I've been eating before bed for 10 years. Um, I think maybe I've been listening to too much heavy muscle radio, but I thought I'd ask you anyway. <laughs> um, you know, acid reflux, believe it or not, mimics all the effects of having a heart attack. So a lot do you remember, of do you remember what I do? You remember when I called you and I said, Dave, I think I'm having a heart attack, mm -hmm. and you laughed at me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That made me feel better. I thought I was having a heart attack. I, I thought I was having a heart attack. I was home alone in my office, and I called you. It was like two or three years ago, and I said, Dave, I think I'm having a heart attack. And 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 uh, you laughed at me and said, get an antacid, which I this for some reason I had him in the house, and it went right away. Not right away, but um, it was acid. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, acid reflux and, 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 and you know just in general makes you feel especially if you're laying in bed and the stuff is laying in your throat think about what happens in your throat okay that you have the epiglottis that covers your air tube that thing is burning because there's this acid you know coming up from your stomach there uh, it's gonna make it hard to breathe you know so a lot of the side effects like I said uh, or, or the the secondary effects of acid reflux is, is, the, is the same effects you feel from having a heart attack. Uh, matter of fact, when you're going to have a heart attack, a lot of people get, you know, indigestion. That's one of the, you know, the this classic signs, a lot of burping and stuff like that. And then you get the pain in, down your arm, your left arm, into your shoulder blade. Uh, you know, you can get that same pain from acid reflux, believe it or not. You get that sticking in your chest. You know, I, I've had it before. I'm like, holy shit. And then I just calmed myself down and I remembered, look, I'm not having a heart attack, you know. I started testing my heart rate. I started putting, you know, heart rate monitors on myself and everything like that. So yeah, it's scary, but that's, uh, but, you know, that's the case. You know, what I would try is try to do some Bragg's apple cider vinegar before bed, a tablespoon and about six ounces of water and, and drink that down. Sometimes I'm late. I don't know if this is a good thing to do. Sometimes I'll mix the apple cider vinegar, the water, and my fiber lies together. I don't know if I don't know if it's working as well <laughs> while I did that, but it it seems to it seems to do the job sometimes. Uh, dear Chris, please ask Dave this question: What's up with beets and nitrates? How many of these damn golf balls do I have to get a nitrous oxide effect? Like beets. I said, I, I got a big beet that was probably the size of like a like. Like almost like a small, almost like like I guess like a baseball, maybe a little between like a baseball and a softball, and I juiced that whole thing up in a juicer, and man, did I get the nitric oxide! Like my, I felt like my head was gonna explode. It was the nitric oxide release I got from that. So um, I would take it. Probably a small beet might do the job as you know sufficiently enough. Um, it's probably a lot easier just to use beetroot beetroot extract that's in like a in one of the pre workouts. Like I, I have a pre workout nitrolyzed that it's in there, but uh, you could do it the old fashioned way too. Okay, uh, yeah, Dave, it's a training question. Uh, what is the difference? In, what is the differences in benefits from full deadlifts from the floor versus rack pulls? Someone just asked me this question. Yeah, I, I always liked deadlifts from the floor. Because I felt that they more completely developed your legs. Because, you know, let's face it. People do deadlifts, but they, they think they're going to develop their back. But the, the, the bottom line is really that they're for leg development, too. Uh, if you're looking to not, if you, let's say your legs are overpowering already, and you're just really looking to target the back, then you do rack pulls because you're not pulling it from the ground. You're going to use less leg, more back. I was a tremendous deadlifter because it was all legs, and I had strong legs. So someone just asked me the question about same thing about deadlifts. I said I always thought the legs came in, you know, into play a lot. Yeah, I agree. Uh, dear Dave, I would rather recite a Shakespeare play with Kai Green and have Steve Blackman in the background shouting, "Wherefore wouldest thee cutteth backeth? Then watch your lame show." <laughs> 
I have experimented with a keto diet this entire summer, or this entire past summer, but I have noticed I really look flat. In the mirror, I am more uh, leaner than I was, but I still don't fill out my shirts anymore. However, when training on a day uh, when my calories are higher, I notice that I look more fuller and have a pretty good pump. Do you have any suggestions as to how do I maintain the fullness and also get lean on using the keto diet? Look, I, I always say to people, you got to be flat if you're gonna if you're gonna lose body fat because being flat means you're glycogen depleted. When you're in a glycogen depleted state, you you burn fat way more efficiently, and that's just the fact. I mean, it comes it comes with the territory. You can't you're not gonna have mind boggling pumps in the gym when you're dieting for a show. Very few people can eat that amount of carbs and still lose body fat. It just doesn't happen because the body doesn't like to mobilize fat when the glycogen stores are like filled to the brim. Um, I'm sure that's why, you know, even if you do a moderate carb diet, you got to do low days and high days because you're only really burning fat on those low days, on those low days where your carb intake is low because then your body is, is depending on stored body fat more for, for fuel. Um, and I think people just don't want to suffer or they don't want to, they want to look like they did in the off season when they're in their contest prep. And, and you got to, you got to change your mindset. It's two different strategies. Okay. Uh, dear Dave, should I have any legitimate concerns about acne reemergent from taking pro hormones? If I recently finished within the last eight months taking Accutane for about nine months, Accutane kind of prevents you from getting acne. I mean, even even on steroids, steroids don't really. Re what happens is the Accutane shrinks the sebaceous glands. Uh, which over secrete usually in the case of people who are just prone to acne and people who take anabolic steroids because the, the spacious glands can grow yeah, from the steroid use. Um, I took Accutane um, and I was obviously still taking anabolic steroids. I had to take a second course of it, but after the second course of it, I never really broke out again very badly. I would still get, you know, the occasional pimple here and there, but, uh, or, you know, blackhead or whatever, but nothing as like I was getting before. So, you're really not going to undo the Accutane's, uh, what Accutane did for you by taking anabolic steroids. But having said that, um, you know, it's probably a person who doesn't take anabolic steroids will get much better results from Accutane. Got it. Uh, dear Dave, I'm wondering, does ephedrine affect hormones and digest and the digestive system for a female? Ephedrine. Does it affect hormones and digest and the digestive system of a female? Um, it's not going to affect hormone production because it's 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 a beta two agonist. You know, it's a beta agonist, a general beta agonist. Actually, that's why it speeds up heart rate too and has a central nervous system stimulating effect. But um, it could certainly anything that cranks the the uh, central nervous system up and and really makes you you know tweak out a little bit can definitely affect digestion. So a lot of people notice that when they take too much caffeine in or anything that has a lot of stimulants in it. They get indigestion. They get they they go to the bathroom too much because it, it's speeding up your your intestinal tract, and that's not something you necessarily want. Especially as a bodybuilder, you want to be able to extract all the nutrition and nutrients out of what you're eating. If if your if your body is pushing things through it too fast, you're going to get malabsorption of a lot of your nutrients. Uh, dear Dave, besides the attempts to make myostatin inhibiting drugs, uh, what other advances in muscle growth technology do you think is possible in the future you know it, it's funny because every time they I say they, there's nothing new they're gonna they're gonna come out with they come out with something new so <laughs> I don't know I don't think that anything will ever be as good as anabolic steroids at building muscle um, even growth hormone is not as good as anabolic steroids at building muscle although it has its own merits and when they combine with each other they work well so I think what we might find is that there's like another piece of the puzzle we find that and if we can add that piece of the puzzle to the equation, we might get a better effect from steroids and from GH, you know, like a synergistic effect. I can see that happening probably before we find some new magic hormone that, that we didn't know was going to build muscle. Now, years ago, people were talking about, you know, putting viral vectors into people's bodies and changing the DNA and all this stuff. And I, I haven't, I don't think any of that ever really materialized, but it, it'll be interesting. I think the myostatin inhibition a thing is still has not been uh, completely, um, uh, I guess you could say, uh, finalized in the sense that they haven't really figured out a way to block myostatin yet efficiently in humans. I think once they do, we will get a good benefit out of that, and I think it will happen. I just think that we're not there yet. 
Okay, uh, dear Dave, I've got some hair loss issues before I ever started a anabolic cycle. But while on steroids, I have absolutely no hair loss at all. Is this logical? You know, some people actually grow more hair on steroids because steroids make the hair grow more. The problem is that when, they, when the, the steroids convert to DHT, uh, the DHT can start, you know, shrinking this, the, the hair follicles in the head so the hair starts to thin and you start to get less growth. Now, that's a very genetic thing because you look at, look at, look at a guy like Jay Cutler. He's got a great head of hair. He never lost a single hair on his head. And I'm sure he's taken many anabolic steroids over the years. So it is a, there is a genetic component. And I think what happens is, and we've talked about epigenetic. I did a whole video on epigenetics, how genes are affected by environmental cues. So if you're putting anabolic steroids into the mix and, and your genes are such that when the right gene is turned on, you lose hair, that's what happens. The steroid makes you lose hair. Another person, you can turn that same switch on, and in their body, they don't have the same gene. They don't lose the hair. So it is, it's really very genetically determined. You know? so, but anabolic steroids do make hair grow more. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if you noticed this, Chris, when you used to compete and take testosterone. You probably didn't have a hair on your back. And then oh, sudden, I was natural. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then you take testosterone, and all of a sudden, you, you get your back shaved once a week. You know? So it definitely makes hair grow faster. Okay, what about, let's see, dear Dave, my arms are 19 and 3 quarters uh, and look good from all angles except the front door bicep shot. They look small or they look 16 inches. Are there any exercises that could help improve my peak, I guess he's asking, or that shot? I am, um, you know I, you know what I used to do? I used to do, um, you probably did these too, but. Uh, the full pump and pose was invented, but go ahead. Yeah, but let, forget, forget artificially enhancing. I'm just for exercise-wise, because I think that's what the question is. I used to really like ending my arm workout with high cable, you know the cable crossover machine? I would do almost like a mimic a front double bicep pose. I would grab the handles you know, high, and I would do a, a front double by with them, basically. I'd pull the handles in like I was posing in a front double bicep position, and I, I got a great, great pump in the arms, and I felt the peaks really contract really well. You can do one arm at a time. You can do both arms together. Uh, but you're basically standing in the mirror and mimicking a front double by. You don't go very heavy, but you really squeeze those arms, and it's a great way to finish an arm workout. Dear Dave, what is a better high, a killer pump or three Percocets? <laughs> I've never, I've <laughs> never taken. Th- yeah, it's a good question. I've never taken three Percocets. I can't. I, I can't. Uh, can't tell you that. Uh, I guess it would I, be a killer pump on three Percocets. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a lot. A lot of people, I'm sure, have tried that too. You know what? The funny thing is, um, it depends. You can get high on life. You know, a lot of people get high just on what they do because they're so passionate about it, and and some people, you know use drugs and the problem with drugs is they stop working uh and i think we've all well maybe not all of us but i've fallen into that you know i was doing new bane for a while back in the 90s and uh you know i somehow convinced myself that it was anti-catabolic and it was going to help me here and here and you know basically i just was doing it because it probably felt good and it stopped stops feeling good after a while and you're kind of just doing it to do it and to not feel withdrawal symptoms and once i stopped it you know uh, I realized, holy mackerel, life is so much more, bigger of a high if you're doing what you love. And that's, that's, that's I always said to me, I, I tell people that all the time, I say it on this show, if you do what you love, you don't need to get high on anything else because you'll be high on life all the time. Yep. Uh, dear Dave, I have a question about insulin use and doping slash drug testing mm-hmm. at bodybuilding shows. Can insulin be detected by a drug test or a urine sample? Nah, not really. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think there's any t- any test for it. I don't think anyone really. Te- I don't think it really has any uh, performance enhancing uh, advantage, really. Um, to be honest with you, but that's why they probably don't test for it. It's not something that people worry about. It's it's something more of a recovery aid. But I don't really believe it can be tested for because it's it's human insulin essentially. It would come up as they would have to do some kind of very special test for it. And, you know, they claim that they can detect growth, growth hormone coming from an artificial source. Now, I don't even believe that because I don't know one person who's failed a growth hormone test. Okay. Uh, last question, uh, dear Dave. Um, why, ask Dave why he quit doing everything he did during his MD days, like transformation challenges, the whack pack show, iron asylum training, day in the life of an IFBB pro, female bodybuilding, etc. 
Well, you know, you evolve with the times, and I think that you know the pro or all our programming evolved. You know, and you know, time constraints, and um, it just you're always trying to reinvent yourself, so to speak. And uh, a lot of the stuff we did was because we really didn't have the ability to do live TV programming. And that was really mm -hmm. always what I wanted to do. I felt it was more sports center, you know, type of uh, like feel to it. I thought it had I thought it had more, you know, uh, excitement. Uh, we could talk about the topics of the day. The people wouldn't have to be in the room with you. And I started doing more of that. And I thought that that was really what people wanted. They wanted a, a, a place to go like ESPN for bodybuilding to find out what's going on, what the opinions of the day are. Just like, look, the most exciting thing, okay, after a Super Bowl is over is hearing all the analysis of the Super Bowl, right? Everyone yeah, wants totally to know agree. what happened in this quarterback and who threw this and the MVP and the fumbled ball and – that we want the analysis. We love it. We 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 can't wait for that post game show. That's the best part of the whole thing, rehashing it and reliving it over and over and over again. And I think that's really what we do. And we we dissect all the topics. And yeah, you know, there's some fun topics we talk about in the fights and all this stuff. But the bottom line is analysis and information providing. I think that's what I found that through my studies of what people really want. They want information first, and secondly. They want analysis of what's going on. And that's what, that's what we're trying to give people on rxmuscle.com. And when you see the new website launched within probably in the next month or so, uh, you'll see that the, the focus is really going to be on original TV programming. And you're going to see a lot. It's going to be very easy to navigate the site and get to see what you want. And it's once again, it's like a TV station. We've created a TV station. It took a while to do it, and we have it now. And we're going to set it up on the website like a TV station so you guys can benefit from it. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of people, look, I, I listen to a lot of our shows because I listen to our radio show on my iPod, my, on my iPhone. I, have the, I go to the podcast manager. I told you I download, I subscribe to our feed. And I listen to the show. I laugh my ass off in the gym listening to us talk about it. And I know what I'm saying already. And, and, I, and, I, and I find it amusing because you know what? It, it makes the workout go faster. Or if I'm driving to and from work, it's a half hour each way. It passes the time. I do this with reptile shows. So, you know, I know that what people want. The people in our industry that are immersed and love bodybuilding, they want as much of it as they can get because they want to educate themselves as much as they can get because they know it's going to make them better bodybuilders and better coaches and whatever they want to do in, in the industry. And that's, that's what the focus of RX Muscle has always been and is, will continue to be in the future. And we'll keep reinventing it and we'll always change. So the people, there'll always be people who wanted this old stuff, we did that old thing. And sometimes we bring back some of the old stuff because it was really good. But the bottom line is you got to move forward. You know, sometimes we've played out a lot of stuff over and over, and it's, it's, we're at the point now where we want to create new stuff, new programming, new ideas, new people into the mix, and new analysis. And that's really what 2017, that's the theme of 2017. It's going to be the new RX muscle, the new programming, and, and the new year. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I know the Arnold Classic is coming up in about eight weeks, and uh, it's going to be a great season. Five weeks. Is it five weeks already? It's five weeks. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, time is That's flying. why I told you I was panicking about the hotel. You're right. We're at the end of I just We just mentioned the beginning of the show. We're at the end of January. I can't even believe it. No. Nope. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. We're out of time, and you know what that means. Until next week, remember, with Heavy Muscle Radio. The truth hurts. <laughs>